Right, what's happening guys? Welcome to another episode of Sensible Investing. My name is Jesse and today we've got a very interesting stock to cover. And uh, the stock is Graftech, ticker symbol EAF, traded on the New York Stock Exchange. Now guys, uh, before we get into this analysis, I just wanted to, again, just mention that anything that you see on today's video or anything on that channel, uh, on this channel for that matter, should not be construed as financial advice. And before buying anything, you should always do your own research. And guys, if you're enjoying these videos and you want to see more deep research and thorough analysis of companies that could be undervalued, then uh, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and share this video. All right, guys, so let's get into it. What is Graftech? Then I'm going to take you through the bull thesis. Uh, we're also going to look at the bear thesis and do some more digging around how valid that actual bear thesis is. And then we're going to conclude by talking about the intrinsic value of Graftech and just some of my concluding remarks about the company. So, guys, Graftech. This was a really interesting article that I found the other day talking about this company. And I had come across this company about uh, a few weeks ago, and then I was uh, pointed to this article from a Reddit page. And it really just details some of the reasons why I believe this company is undervalued and I'm also bullish on this company. So, guys, Graftech, what is it? In short, what you see on the right hand side, these graphite electrodes, uh, these are absolutely essential to what you see on the left hand side, which is an electric arc furnace for steel making. And so without these electrodes, you, you basically won't be able to use an electric arc furnace to make steel. Uh, furthermore, electrodes are very quickly used up, and so as a result, uh, these things have to be constantly replaced. So it's a really good recurring revenue stream for these makers. And so a little bit of history about Graftech. So Graftech were trading publicly up until about 2015. Uh, in 2015, they were taken private by Brookfield Asset Management. And then they were listed as a public company again in 2017. And you guys might be wondering, okay, well, why, why did that happen? And the result is because there was a massive spike in the spot price of uh, graphite electrodes, basically. And so you guys might be wondering, okay, so what caused the spike? And, you know, I, I see that it's dropped back down. Is it going to drop further? Is this a bit of a commodity? Uh, you know, what's the market like? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer that for you throughout the rest of this video. So just to let you know, prior to 2017, when the interest was low, uh, and, and graphite electrodes, the spot price was at about 3500 So as you can see, it's still trading at a nice premium to what it was. So first of all, let's talk about electric arc furnaces versus coal steel production, okay? And why would people use electric arc furnaces and these expensive electrodes uh, rather than coal? And, and the answer is basically simple, okay? Coal is a very, very heavily polluting uh, thing to use in the making of steel and as you guys can appreciate because it is so heavily polluting uh, many countries are very strict about their laws of you know carbon dioxide and carbon emissions and, and as you can appreciate that really limits the ability for anyone to make steel using coal in, in most developed uh, nations so here's the bull, bull thesis about Graftech okay now it's dropped massively from its high, a uh, little bit over 50%, and it's, it hit its high uh, sort of late last year, right? Uh, now, there, there's a massive amount of short interest in the company, but yet they're smashing their numbers quarter on quarter on quarter. So, as you can see, they listed uh, about a year ago, okay? And every single quarter, they've smashed their numbers, beat the EPS beat the revenue. So double beats four quarters in a row. Now, the the other reason why I'm really bullish on Graftech is because Graftech, basically the share prices went from an all-time high to pretty much an all-time low. And the reason being is because they were double downgraded by uh, two analysts, okay? And now you guys might say, well, what's the significance of this? Well, when these analysts are on average, you know, between two and barely three stars, in terms of how their picks perform, and, and also the fact that they've only got an average annual return of about 0.7 and 1%. When I see these middle-of-the-pack analysts who, you know, in terms of their picks, 
they either have a 25% accuracy rate or at best a coin flip accuracy rate and they go and downgrade a stock and it drops massively I get excited now let's talk about the industry guys so I have for you here four of Graphtech's biggest competitors and as you can see everybody's share price has followed a trajectory similar to Graphtech's there was a major boom followed by a, a spectacular bust following the spot price of graphite electrodes going from about 40,000 down to about 11,000. I guess you guys can say electrode makers are basically at the mercy of not only the spot prices of electrodes but also petroleum coke prices and the reason being is because pet coke is a crucial ingredient in the making of uh, the, these electrodes, right? So we've got basically the spot prices of electrodes going like this and then the spot prices of pet coke going up. And so that's the whole reason why the entire industry has been sold off and has uh, effectively halved or you know dropped 60-70% from their all-time highs. Because of demand, pet coke prices will not fall for the next two years and putting further pressure, margin pressure, on these uh, electrode makers. However, Here's the bull thesis. So Graphtech is a very, very different company. Now, all of Graphtech com Graphtech's competitors trade everything on spot, right? So we're talking spot prices for pet coke, spot prices for the electrodes, spot prices for everything. However, if we do some careful digging, we'll actually realize that Graphtech have f three to five year, but majority five year long take or pay agreements which is locked in the spot price for the electrodes at no lower than $9,600 a ton. And so just to give you an indication, that's, that's about sort of 83% of all their revenue comes from these long-term contracts. So really what we have is only a small portion of their revenue that's actually at the mercy of, of spot prices, right? And so if we have a look at this, if the customers of Graphtech do not want to buy the graphite electrodes at those prices, they will then have to pay Graphtech that amount in cash. It, in effect, right, it's a take or pay contract. And so to illustrate, prior to 2018, Graphtech was also at the mercy of both spot prices for electrodes and spot prices for the raw materials. But as you can see, with the three to five year long take or pay contracts, they've effectively mitigated 87% of that risk. Let's talk about pet coke, okay? So pet coke, what is it? As we touched on before, it's a critical and crucial material material for the making of these electrodes. And as you can see, the, the process to make pet coke is uh, very, very complex. Uh, as a result, these graphite electrode companies have to procure the pet coke um, at the basically whatever the market price is, right? So if there's oversupply, buyer's market, right? If there, there's an undersupply, then they're going to be at the mercy of the producers of pet coke. And as you can see here, guys, I found a couple of major providers in the industry, okay? So we've got Philips 66 and Seadrift. And these two companies account for 50% of the overall market. So they have a lot of pricing power in terms of... Uh, you know, whether pet coke is up or down. But here's the interesting thing. Sea Drift Coke is 100% owned by Graphtech. And so what this means is 70% of all of Graphtech's pet coke requirements for the making of their electrodes, that they'll be able to get at lower than wholesale prices because they own the second equal largest producer of pet coke in the whole world, right? And and this is why I'm so bullish on Graphtech. So they've locked in their prices for at least three to five years, and they own basically a quarter of the world's pet coke production. So uh, they are neither vulnerable from the spot prices of pet coke to a large extent, and also similarly to a large extent the spot price fluctuations of these electrodes. So as you can see here, this is a news article about them talking about acquiring Sea Drift Coke back in 2010. So very, very interesting. And, and so as a result, I've just given you some details about the pet coke market. So you can see that Graphtech has uh, continually increased their pet coke production in order to match demands. And uh, they basically have some more projects later to 
you know, produce even more pet coke, basically. So this helps them scale their production to even less be affected by the uh, by, by the market fluctuations of the spot prices of pet coke. And so a good example is over here, the, the, the world's uh, other biggest pet coke provider, they increased their pet coke prices by 24%. So as you, can, as you guys can see, you know, if you are buying pet coke to make electrodes, you're going to have massive problems and it's going to be massive margin compression for you guys, right? So we've covered the bull thesis, let's talk the bear thesis. So in short, the bear thesis is basically what the two analysts before who downgraded the stock um, are saying, okay? So I put this into four key, four or five key bullet points for you. Basically, uh, the bear thesis is there are fears that China will mass produce pet coke, uh, therefore driving down pet coke prices, therefore making production of electrodes in China much cheaper so China can undercut everybody in the market. Also, the fears are that China has developed the capability to produce quality electrodes on mass. Okay, so there's regular electrodes and quality electrodes. We're going to cover that a little bit later in the video. So the fear is that China is going to flood the market because the government heavily subsidizes any exports. Okay, and that's going to drive the spot market back down to below four thousand dollars per metric ton, which will then commoditize the entire market and adversely affect Graftec. That's basically the bear thesis. Uh, in, in a few points. But there's some questions that we have to ask ourselves, okay? So the first question is, does China actually have the means to produce the pet coke on mass? Um, if so, what's the actual quality of the pet coke that they can produce to make electrodes? And then if so, you know, what's the actual quality of the electrodes that they'll, that they'll produce? And, um, you know, who's actually going to quality check these electrodes? Because I'm sure you guys are aware that China is uh, synonymous for dodgy, low-quality stuff, okay? So who's actually going to verify that these are indeed quality quality products? Uh, what's China's track record for producing quality pet coke and graphite electrodes? Will China's own consumption of these two things exceed its production capability, which would actually fuel the shortage, not feed the uh, oversupply? And apart from electrodes, what else is pet coke used for? And how much of China's pet coke is used in non for, sorry how much of China's pet coke is used for non electro purposes? Okay, guys. So these are the questions that we have to keep in mind. So keeping these questions in mind, let's have a look. First of all, China are a net importer of pet coke, and after the trade war, they're now turning to Russia and the Middle East to import pet coke. And so as you can see, they imported uh, three and a half million tons of pet coke from the United States and their annual import volume back in 2017 is 7.2 million tons, okay? And just another key point, China's pet coke isn't just used for the uh, production of steel or aluminium, you know, in, in this uh, electric arc furnace, but it's also used for uh, the production of cement. And uh, ju just, just keep in mind, okay, the higher the sulfur content, the more useless it is uh, for the production of steel in an electric arc furnace. So just keep that in mind, okay, guys? And guys, here's another thing to keep in mind, okay? The cement industry in China is not small. So, uh, you know, that that's that's a massive sort of, uh, I, guess, I guess, a competitor to the people who need pet coke, right? So we've got to use it for cement, we've got to use it for aluminium, we've got to use it for steel. There are a lot of things that pet coke needs to be used for. So there might not even be enough pet coke to go around. And I think this paragraph from the most recent uh, earnings call of Graftec really illustrates that. It, it, it really details basically just how complex the process is to produce pet coke and it's not like people can just wake up one day and decide they're going to produce it and, and even if they did, you know, it, it, it's, it comes from a secondary process. So, so pet coke is actually a secondary ingredient not a primary ingredient. So all of these things we have to keep in mind, okay? And so what I wanted to take you guys through now is quickly just a little bit of detail about the production of pet coke and decant oil, which is used to produce pet coke, okay guys? So on the left is the process which one needs to use to produce pet coke, and on the right is the process one needs to use to produce decant oil to produce pet coke. Okay, it sounds a little bit confusing, I do not have a degree in chemistry, and I have no idea where any, what any of this shit means. So if any of you guys 
have a degree in chemistry or chemical engineering, I'd love to hear from you, so leave a comment as to how hard you guys think it is, okay? But of my reading of these two pictures as a layperson, uh, this looks very complex, and uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily confident that a com country who's a net import of pet coat can just wake up one day and produce all of this stuff, okay? Um, so just remember, guys, pet coke is a byproduct, not the main product, okay? And, and as you guys can see, pet coke comes from the process of creating fuel oil. So again, uh, we, we have to sort of keep in mind, okay, so first of all, this country is a net importer of pet coke. Second of all, it's a secondary product, okay? Is it even feasible for them to produce this en masse? And, and I, I don't actually know. I mean, looking at this, I think it's not feasible, in the short term at least. Um, and, and, and if we just look back to the previous slide, it, it, it has taken the people who are experts at this, okay, the people Graftech who've owned Seadrift years upon years upon years to perfect their process of producing not only decant oil but pet coke. And, and so one has to ask, well, if, this, if China as an importing nation has been doing this for, for some time, I mean, how long will it take them to perfect the process, okay? So, so these are all of the things that we've got to keep in mind when we look at a process that's this complex. Okay, guys, moving on to the next point. So, again, guys, I have some more extracts from the quarter one conference call Q&A session with GraphTech. And th this is a lot of text, guys. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to summarize it, okay? So basically what the CEO is saying is that during times of extreme uh, graphite electrode shortage, people have bought lower Chinese quality electrodes to trial them, okay? Not, not even to use. So there's actually no way to verify the quality of these electrodes. Furthermore, the demand for these electrodes in China itself is going to grow, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. So I actually see that there will be even more need for these electrodes, not less need, okay? And we'll talk about that why. So let's have a look at China's own electrode consumption, and then we'll then talk about China's ability to produce these electrodes. So guys, as you can see, this is China's cement production uh, from sort of 10 years till now, in the last 10 years, and this is China's steel production, okay? And, and as you guys can see, the cement production is either staying stagnant or declining just a little bit, but it's a little bit cyclical. But the steel production is going up year on year on year on year. So now, now this is interesting, and the reason being is because not only is that going up, but also the production of electric vehicles in China is going up. So th this is, you know, all of these things require pet coke and electrodes. So the industries and the demand for pet coke is only going to increase exponentially, okay? So again, I think that, you know, this is another reason to be not so bearish uh, about, about these bear thesis that we saw before. Guys, what I have on the screen for you is the process of making both steel and the process of making cement using the old way. And the old way is with coal. And as we saw at the beginning, it's highly pollutant. This is how much coal is required per uh, per ton of cement and per ton of steel. So that that's a massive amount of coal, and the amount of pollution that causes is astronomical. And so as a result, what's been happening is the Chinese government has been massively cracking down on steel and cement makers. And again, this is, this is another tailwind for the industry, right? So because of this crackdown, um, basically, if people want to continue business, they have to find another way to heat up the raw materials to make either steel or aluminium or cement. And the other way, or the zero pollutant way, is using the electric arc furnace. And so as a result, guys, um, you know, this is another reason why I think that there's going to be actually a shortage, not an oversupply of these electrodes moving forward. And people will soon enough find out whether the quality of China's electrodes are up to scratch, and also whether the quality of their pet coke is up to scratch. And, and I think they're going to be surprised. So guys, what I wanted to do now is to take you through an article that I found where uh, Steel Mint sent somebody into China to interview a pet coke producer, okay? And, and I wanted to really focus on some key points within this article just to show you why I'm not that concerned about the bear thesis. Okay, guys, so first of all, of this massive paragraph of text, what I want you guys to just keep in mind is that 
UHP electrodes, okay, of this whole paragraph, a lot of words, just keep in mind, 600 millimeters or less, that's what we need, okay, so quality equals 600 millimeters or less in terms of the electrodes and needle coke. Keeping this in mind, we, we should then read the third paragraph and looking at especially the last two sentences, okay, so by October 2019, the much-awaited expansion plans within this particular producer in China is going to allow them to be suitable for the production of graphite electrodes ranging from 600 millimeters or above. Okay, but what we want is 600 millimeters or below. So again, there's a bit of a contradiction in terms of, you know, the analysts saying China can produce these high-quality electrodes, yet the producers themselves saying that well. Maybe they're not saying it's difficult, but as you can see, we want 600 millimeters or below. Second thing that we should focus on. So again, there's a lot of text, but what I want you guys to focus on is just a few key words, okay? The demand for needle coke from both the graphite electrodes and anodes, which is for the electric vehicle sector, will be about a million tons uh, by 2020, but the production will only be 960,000. So there's going to be a shortfall of 40,000. Okay. The other thing I want you guys to focus on. Chinese needle coke manufacturers have made a breakthrough, according to this chap at this manufacturing plant that the author visited. Okay. So he talks about them making a breakthrough in the production of needle coke used to manufacture 700 millimeter uh, UHP graphite electrodes. Okay, guys. But what we want is the true high quality ones is we want 600 millimeters or below. So again, another uh, indication as to I believe that China's actually far, far behind in the game in terms of these high quality electrodes, okay? The other thing, now this guy talks about it taking two years to set up a needle coke plant for others, but for them it's uh, 10 months. And if we think back to the two pictures we saw below, again, I'm not a chemical engineer, but that looks like some complex shit. And I'm very skeptical of his comments of being able to set this up in 10 months, okay? But again, I'm not a chemical engineer, so I'm not too sure. I could be wrong. But if we look at the last sentence, we plan to start manufacturing electrodes of a size to 600 and 650 millimeters, okay? But again, if we think back to before, we want 600 millimeters or less. So again, I'm not really convinced that China's going to be able to pump out these high-quality electrodes uh, in, in time. And so I've included a market watch article uh, about the needle, uh, needle coke industry or pet coke industry outlook. And really what I want us to focus on in this whole wall of text is that China has smaller amounts of needle coke enterprises which feature weak technological bases and are huddled by the uncertainty of stable production and product quality. Okay, so if we think about everything that we've read up until this point, um, I'm pretty convinced that China's not going to be able to just pump these out in the next two, three, four years. Again, I'm not a chemical engineer, I could be wrong, but if it's taken the sea drift and graph tech many, many, many years to perfect the art, we should then ask ourselves, okay, does it sound like China is in a position to pump these quality electrodes out and pump out the raw pet coke material out um, at, at an exponential rate? Okay, and, and I, I don't feel like they are. And I think the people who have bought these Chinese electrodes and also the lower quality Chinese pet coke, they're going to be in for a little bit of a nasty surprise, which I believe is then going to drive them back to buy further buy the quality stuff. And so we, we might even see a disparity in terms of uh, quality and, and prices for Chinese versus other uh, produced like Japanese and American electrodes. We can also see that 20% currently of their production is earmarked for uh, electric vehicle growth, okay? So so let, let's think about that and then take 20% of that and then give it to, to the electric vehicle growth. So I think that's further going to add pressure to the undersupply or the demand of these graphite electrodes. All right, guys, so let's talk about the intrinsic value of this company, okay? Now, um, I'm not going to spend too long on this point because I've linked through to the Market Plungers article about Graftech, where he does a very good intrinsic value analysis, and, and I largely agree with his assessment. So basically what we have is we have a company that's guaranteed good income for the next three to five years, 
which is paying back at least 50 to 60 percent of free cash flow returned to shareholders and in special circumstances up to 71 percent. Furthermore, if we go and now look at the article, over here we have a very detailed calculation of what this author believes the intrinsic value for graph tech is. And I would actually say that I agree with that, okay? And so as you guys can see, you know, we sort of arrive at about $21 to $24 a share. Now again, guys, none of this is financial advice. Um, this is just, you know, his opinion, and, and, I, and I would agree with that, okay? And this intrinsic value is actually only their guaranteed contracts alone, okay? So we, we have to then look at the rest of their revenues from the spot price. And currently the spot price is about 11500 Um The author has conservatively used it dropping down to $7,000 a metric tonne. Um, and, and he's assigned a fair value of about $5 a share to that. I actually think it's a little bit on the low end. Okay, guys, so just to conclude the video, uh, as, as we saw before, I covered for you both the bull and the bear thesis, and some of the reasons why I think the bear thesis is actually unjustified and perhaps uh, isn't as well researched as, as uh, the, the two analysts hoped that it would have been. So, um, as a result, I'm quite bullish on graph tech. Now, again, because I'm not a chemical engineer, I could be very, very wrong in terms of China's ability to quickly ramp up the productions of high-quality electrodes and high-quality pet coke. If I am wrong, that's going to be massively problematic for graph tech, perhaps not in the three to five years, but then we're going to ask, well, what, what's going to happen to the company after three to five years if spot prices of electrodes do indeed drop to about 4,000, okay? So that's going to be massively problematic. Uh, as a result, I'm probably not going to put any more than about 1% or 2% exposure of my portfolio to the stock. Um, again, guys, you guys do your own research. If perhaps you're a chemical engineer and you know for a fact that it's going to take Graph Tech, uh, not Graph Tech, sorry, China, a whole lot longer to produce these high-quality materials, then perhaps you, you might uh, have, have a bit more risk tolerance to me. And if so, look, I would love to hear from you uh, as to whether my analysis is actually correct. So guys, uh, until the next video, happy investing, and I'll catch you next time.